Okay. We are going to start looking today at trigonometry. Now, um, so far we've, we've, we've learned about Pythagoras' theorem, right? That's what we've been doing so far. We've learned about Pythagoras and that's through side lengths. So A and B are the short sides of the triangle, C is the long side. And we learned this formula that um, short side squared plus short side squared equals long side squared. That's Pythagoras' theorem. What we're moving on to um, involves side lengths and angles. Okay, so trigonometry, okay, we've been learning Pythagoras, which is just about the side lengths. Trigonometry involves both side lengths and angles. Okay, firstly, labeling sides. Um, what you can do, please, is copy down this triangle into your books. And actually, let me explain. Um, the hypotenuse we've already come across. So let's say that um, we're interested in this angle down here. So again, trigonometry only applies to right angle triangles. So um, what I want you to do is just copy this triangle into your books, a right angle triangle, label an angle. The hypotenuse is always the longest side. Okay, that's always the longest side of the right angle triangle. It's always opposite the um, 90 degree angle. We call the side opposite the angle, the opposite side, funnily enough, because it's opposite the angle that we're interested in. Okay, so it's opposite the angle. And what about the side down here? Well, we call that the adjacent side. Adjacent is just a, a big word that means next to or besides. So that's the side, this is the side here that is next to the angle. So we call it the adjacent side because it's next to the angle. The hypotenuse is always the, is also next to the angle, but the hypotenuse is the longest side, so we call it the hypotenuse, not the adjacent side. So the adjacent side is the other side that's next to the angle. So we've got opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna need to understand those terms for, um, for later on. Okay, here's a question for you. What do you notice about these triangles? Look at the side lengths. What do you notice about these triangles? You should notice that in all three triangles, the vertical side is exactly half the length of the hypotenuse. Okay, so the vertical side is half the length of the hypotenuse. Same here. Okay, 30 and 60, it's half. Same here. Now, there's a reason for that. And the reason is that all of these triangles have the same shape. They're all um, 30 degree triangles. So if I was to put the angles in, all of these, all of these triangles would have a 30 degree angle um, in, that, in that position. So in each triangle, the side opposite the angle is half the length of the hypotenuse. Can you see that? This, this side here is the opposite side. Okay, the opposite is opposite the angle. So it's opposite. The opposite is half the hypotenuse. Now here's a question for you. Would that be true for any 30 degree triangle? Would the opposite side always be half the hypotenuse for a 30 degree triangle? The answer is yes, because the angle fixes the shape of the triangle. So for any 30 degree triangle, and we see here all of these are 30 degree triangles, the opposite side, opposite that, that 30 degrees, is always going to be half the hypotenuse because any 30 degree triangle has the same shape. So the opposite will always be half of the hypotenuse. Okay, for any 30 degree triangle, opposite over hypotenuse equals 0 0.5. If we, take, if we take the opposite side and divide it by the hypotenuse, we get 0 0.5. Okay. Um, now, you don't have to um, draw this. But let's just let's just think about it. Okay, this is here's a 30 degree triangle down here, and the opposite is half the length of the hypotenuse. Okay, 50 is half the length of 100. So if we were to go opposite divided by hypotenuse, we'd get 0 0.5. Here's a 40 degree triangle. Now we're changing it up a little bit. This the shape is different, okay, because the angle is larger. So if I go opposite divided by hypotenuse, opposite divided by hypotenuse, what am I going to get? Well, 64 over 100, I'm going to get 0 0.64. What about for a 50 degree triangle? If I take the opposite side and divide it by the hypotenuse, I'm going to go 77 over 100, and I'm going to get 0 0.77. So what we see is that as the angle changes 
so, do the, so does the length of the opposite relative to the hypotenuse. Okay, for the 30 degree triangle, it's half the length of the hypotenuse. For a 40 degree triangle, it's 0.64 of the hypotenuse. For a 50 degree triangle, it's 0.77. So the larger the angle, the larger the opposite, opposite side is relative to the hypotenuse. Now, sine, cosine, and tangent. You may have heard of these before. You have buttons on your calculator for each of these. And these are the, the these are the three um, basic trigonometric functions that we're going to learn about: sine, cosine, and tangent. So, what is a function? What is a function? A function is like a machine. Okay, so you can think of a function like a machine. We put something into it. We put in an input, and our our function does something with that input and gives us an output based on that input. So, the first trigonometric function that we're going to look at is sine. Sine is a function that takes an angle as an input and gives us a ratio as an output, okay? So sine is a function. We put in an angle, and it gives us a ratio. For example, get your calculators out. If you don't have a calculator, um, just use the Google calculator. And now if, if you're using the Google calculator, you have to use, um, you have to change it to degrees, not radians. At the top left, there's a setting to change it to degrees, D-E-G for degrees. But you guys should hopefully you guys have your actual physical calculators at home. So put into your calculator sine 30 and press enter. You should get 0 0.5. Your calculator, if you if you didn't get 0 0.5, your calculator may be set to radians, and you'll have to figure out how to change the setting to degrees instead of radians. Okay, so sine is a function, it's, it's like a machine. We put into it an angle and it gives us a ratio. So when we put 30 degrees into the function, okay, that's the input, we get 0 0.5. So if we put in an angle of 30 degrees into our sine function, we get out this ratio of 0 0.5. That's what it gives us. What does it mean? Okay, so when we put the angle of 30 degrees in, we get 0 0.5. What does that output of 0 0.5 mean? What does this 0 0.5 mean? Well, think back to our 30 degree triangle, right? If our, if our triangle is, has a 30 degree angle, and the opposite side is 0 0.5 of the hypotenuse. Okay, where do we see 0 0.5? Well, we see it in the fact that this divided by this is also 0 0.5. So 0 0.5 is the ratio opposite divided by hypotenuse. Okay, opposite divided by hypotenuse is 0 0.5. And when we put sine 30 degrees, when we put 30 degrees into our sine function, it gives us 0 0.5. Okay. So we know that when we put 30 degrees into sine, it gives us 0 0.5. And we also know that in a 30 degree triangle, the ratio of opposite to hypotenuse is equal to 0 0.5. Can you see what the sine function does? Have a think about it for a minute. What is the sine function doing for us? Well, what it's doing is it's looking at the angle, it's looking at the angle of 30 degrees, and based on that angle, it's telling us the ratio of the opposite side to the hypotenuse. So based on the angle size, it tells us the ratio of the opposite side to the hypotenuse. For example, if it's a 30 degree triangle, the sine function tells us that the ratio of opposite divided by hypotenuse is 0 0.5, and that would be different for a different angle. So sine is a function that takes an angle as an input, and based on that angle, tells us the ratio of the opposite side to the hypotenuse. Okay, so it takes an angle as an input, and the output is the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse, that ratio, which it gives us as a decimal number. For example, sine 30 equals 0 0.5. This means that if the angle is 30 degrees, the ratio of opposite divided by hypotenuse is 0 0.5. Okay, so if the angle is 30 degrees, then opposite divided by hypotenuse is half, or 0 0.5. This means that the opposite side is 0 0.5, or half the length of the hypotenuse. Okay, that's what the sine function does for us. Let's try a different um, let's try a different angle size. So if we know that sine 40, if you put into your calculator sine 40, you should get 0 0.64. So that means that if the angle is 40 degrees, the ratio opposite divided by hypotenuse is 0 0.64. Okay, if it's 40 degrees, then opposite divided by hypotenuse is going to be 0 0.64. That's what the sine function tells us. It looks at the angle size. And based on the angle size tells us that this divided by this is 0 0.64, which means that the opposite side is 0 0.64 or 64% of the length of the hypotenuse. Let's do one more. 
as a third example, sine 50 equals 0 0.77. Okay, you can do this in your calculator. Sine 50, if you put that into your calculator, will give you 0 0.77. What does that mean? That means that if the angle is 50 degrees, the ratio of opposite divided by hypotenuse is 0 0.77. Okay, if it's a 50 degree triangle, then this divided by this, opposite divided by hypotenuse, is equal to 0 0.77 which means that the opposite side is 0.77 or 77% of the length of the hypotenuse. So, what, what have we found out? Sine is a function, like a machine. Put, and based on, on that angle, tells us the ratio of the opposite side to the hypotenuse. Okay, it tells us the ratio of this to this based on the angle size. Now, we often use a Greek symbol called theta to represent the angle. That's just like an O with a line through it. So our angle that we can use theta. Um, we say that the sine of the angle tells us the ratio of opposite divided by hypotenuse. Okay, the sine of the angle tells us the ratio of opposite divided by hypotenuse. As an, as an equation, we can write it like this. Sine of the angle tells us O over H. And for a 30 degree triangle, it was 0 0.5. For a 40 degree triangle, it was 0 0.64 and so on. Okay, so the sine of the angle tells us the ratio of opposite divided by hypotenuse. Sine of the angle gives us that ratio opposite divided by hypotenuse. So if the angle is 60 degrees, what is the ratio of the opposite to the, to the hypotenuse? See if you can work it out. I'm going to just get a drink of water and I'll be back in a sec. You might just use your calculator. Okay, so the question was, if the angle is 60 degrees, what is the ratio of the opposite to the hypotenuse? Well, sine will tell us that ratio, right? So if we put into our calculator sine 60, we get 0 0.87. So that tells us that the ratio of the opposite to the hypotenuse is 0 0.87. Okay, so that we, put, we put 60 degrees into our sine function. We use the calculator and it tells us 0 0.87. What that means is that the ratio of opposite to hypotenuse is 0 0.87. Or, if the angle is 60 degrees, the opposite side is 0 0.87 or 87% of the hypotenuse. What about if the angle is 70? Well, we just do the same thing, right? We put 70 degrees into our calculator, into sine, and it gives us that ratio, 0 0.94. So if the angle is 70 degrees, then the ratio of opposite divided by hypotenuse is 0 0.94 which means that if the angle is 70 degrees, the opposite side is 94% of the hypotenuse. As the angle gets larger, the ratio gets larger, which makes sense. Okay, so far, we've only been looking at one of the functions, sine. Now let's have a look at another one, which is cosine. The second trig function we'll look at is cosine, or cos for short. Now, it's like sine, except that instead of the opposite side, it uses the adjacent side. The side next to the angle. Okay, so we're working with the adjacent side and the, and the hypotenuse. So sine dealt with the opposite side and the hypotenuse. Cosine deals with the adjacent side and the hypotenuse. Apart from that, it's the same sort of thing. So it's a function that takes an angle as an input and tells us the ratio of adjacent to hypotenuse. Okay, so it's a different ratio. Sine was opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Okay, bear with me, we're, we're, we're getting there. We're like three quarters of the way through the presentation. So just stay focused for another five minutes or so. And um, it's important to understand all this stuff. Okay, so cosine is a function. It takes an angle as an input and tells us the ratio of the adjacent side to the hypotenuse. It tells us the ratio of this side divided by this side. For example, what is the ratio of adjacent to hypotenuse? If the angle is 30 degrees well we put cosine 30 so if the angle is 30 degrees what is this ratio here well we put 30 degrees into cosine on a calculator and we get 0 0.87 that tells us that if the angle is 30 degrees the ratio of adjacent divided by hypotenuse is 0 
Okay, so this divided by this is 0 0.87, which means that the adjacent side is 87% of the length of the hypotenuse. And you can see that it looks about right, yeah? This length here is about 87% of this length. Okay, let's look at another example. What if, um, what is the ratio of the adjacent side to the hypotenuse if the angle is 40 degrees? Well, again, we put in 40 degrees into our calculator, into the cosine function, and it gives us 0 0.77. That tells us that the ratio of this side to this side is 0 0.77, which tells us that um, the adjacent side for a 40 degree triangle is 77% of the length of the hypotenuse. Okay, so sine and cosine, they both take an angle as an input. The sine function tells us the ratio of the opposite to the hypotenuse. Okay, we put in an angle, it gives us the ratio of the opposite side to the hypotenuse. Well, for short, sine theta equals O over H. The cosine function is like that, but it tells us the ratio of the adjacent side to the hypotenuse. Okay, we put it in an angle, and it gives us this ratio adjacent to hypotenuse. Or for short, cos cosine of the angle gives us A over H. Okay, cosine of the angle gives us A over H for cosine, or O over H for sine. Okay, the third trigonometric function is tangent, tan for short. And now the tangent function again takes an angle as an input and it tells us the ratio of opposite divided by adjacent. Okay, that's the third combination of sides that we haven't looked at yet. Okay, it takes an angle as an input and gives us opposite over adjacent as an output. So for example, let's say that we had an angle of 30 degrees. What is the ratio of opposite divided by adjacent? If the angle is 30 degrees, what's the ratio of this to this? Well, we put 30 degrees into our tan function and we get 0 0.58, that's what we get out. So if the angle is 30 degrees, then the ratio of opposite divided by adjacent is 0 0.58, roughly half, or 60%, which means that the opposite side is 0 0.58, or 58% of the length of the adjacent side. Okay, it's comparing these two sides, opposite and adjacent. What if the angle is 40 degrees? What's the ratio of opposite to adjacent then? Well, we put 40 degrees into our tan function, and we get 0 0.84. This means that if the angle is 40 degrees, the ratio of opposite divided by adjacent is 0 0.84, which means that the opposite side, this side here, is 84% of the length of the adjacent side. So our three trigonometric functions are sine, cosine, and tangent. They all take an angle as an input. Sine uses the angle to tell us the ratio of opposite divided by hypotenuse. For short, sine of the angle equals O over H. Cosine tells us the ratio of adjacent divided by hypotenuse. So cos, cos of the angle is equal to A over H. Tangent uses the angle to tell us the ratio of opposite divided by adjacent. Or for short, tan of the angle is equal to O over A. Okay, for a right angle triangle. So for any right angle triangle that looks like this, we've got an angle, an opposite side, an adjacent side, and a hypotenuse. Sine of the angle is equal to O over H, opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine of the angle tells us A over H, or adjacent over hypotenuse. Tangent of the angle tells us O over A, or opposite over adjacent. And that's a summary of um, trigonometry, the basic tr trigonometry, anyway.